On today's episode, GE makes a massive turbine blade, the world's first liquid hydrogen cargo ship, and hybrid power for airplanes. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. In electrical power generation, well, there are a lot of ways to generate heat to spin a turbine. Focused sunlight, fossil fuels, and nuclear, well, they've been the technologies of choice for over a century. But in every case, converting the heat energy trapped in steam into rotational motion to spin generators is the way most of the world gets its power. Now, scaling factors, they play a part in system efficiency and power generation. And General Electric, a major maker of commercial steam turbines, has created the largest ever last-stage blade for the low-pressure rotor installed in the company's Arabelle series steam turbine. Now, that last-stage blade is 75 inches long. The blade fits into a module that's 25 feet wide, rotating at a speed of 1500 RPM, and will be installed in the Hinkley Point C nuclear power plant in the UK. With two of the French-made units installed, the power plant will deliver 3.2 gigawatts of power, an expected life expectancy of 60 years. Now, GE states that the Arabelle steam turbine will be the most powerful nuclear steam turbine on Earth. GE has a considerable footprint in this industry. 30% of all thermal power plants use their turbines, and 50% of all nuclear plants. Next to solar energy, hydrogen promises to be a zero-carbon and scalable energy storage medium that can transition the world from fossil fuel use. Now, getting it from where it's made to where it's needed, however, has several challenges. Pipelines work, but transporting it across oceans requires tankers, and liquefied hydrogen is notoriously difficult to ship, requiring extreme refrigeration and containment that minimizes the leakage that's always a problem when confining tiny and always diffusion-ready H2 molecules. Kawasaki Heavy Industries in Japan appears to have solved this problem, with the final fit-out and readiness of the Suiso Frontier, the world's first bulk liquefied hydrogen transport ship. The ship is an integral part of the joint Japanese-Australian Hydrogen Energy Supply Chain Project, a public-private partnership involving multiple energy generation, distribution, and technology companies, as well as Japanese and Australian national and state governments. The project involves the mining of brown coal from the Latrobe Valley in Victoria, extracting hydrogen gas from the coal, then sequestering carbon dioxide emissions from the process and burying them deep underground. The gas is then transported by truck to the Australian port of Hastings, where it is liquefied and loaded onto the Suiso frontier for shipment to Kobe, Japan. The goal of the project is to demonstrate an end-to-end -end supply chain system from coal pit to commercial distribution of hydrogen gas in Japan, with overall carbon neutrality. Pilot capability is now ready, and if the system works on a commercial scale, it may pave the way for regions to get off coal while maintaining energy independence and industrial viability without compromising CO2 reduction goals. We'll report back as the project progresses. Long before there were electric vehicles, there were hybrids. And for many owners, they're still the best solution for high-efficiency driving. Now, today, everyone is talking about electrification of aircraft, but particularly in personal air vehicles, flying taxis, and small commuter planes. A major drawback to widespread adoption of electric propulsion in aircraft, however, is range. Commercial operation under current FAA regulations requires conservative operations well within an aircraft's maximum range, and includes a requirement for fuel reserves to reach alternate airports. Now, this is a serious problem with current battery technology, but could hybrid propulsion solve that problem? Honeywell Aerospace thinks so, and they've developed a turbo generator system for small aircraft that is essentially a small gas turbine spinning a battery charging generator. Now, weight is everything in aviation, and the generator tips the scales at a svelte 280 pounds, yet delivers 1 megawatts of power. Spinning the generator will be a Honeywell HGT 1700 auxiliary power unit, as is currently installed on the Airbus A350 XWB. Now, the system is designed to run on multiple fuels, from conventional kerosene-based jet fuels to diesel, aviation biofuels, as well as Honeywell's own green jet fuel, the product of a company joint venture with UOP, which developed a process called eco-fining. The turbo generator is designed for air taxis, commuter aircraft, or heavy lift cargo drones. It's expected to make demonstration runs in the third quarter of the year, with qualification to follow. Honeywell has a launch order with British startup Faradair Aerospace to power Faradair's bioelectric hybrid aircraft. Faradair plans to deliver 300 hybrid electric aircraft into service by 2030, of which 150 will be in a firefighting configuration. While intended for the new generation of electric aircraft, the implications for the light turboprop market are clear. With the ability for one turbo generator to feed multiple electric motors, this technology could give airframe designers unprecedented freedom to package propulsion systems for both low drag and for center of gravity optimization in the design. Light commercial aircraft design is about to get a lot more interesting. 
Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found in our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.